Hi, good day everyone. So we're from group 7 and me and the rest of my team members today will explain to you what is impulse modulation and multiplex. Alright, so let's get right on it. So what is pulse modulation? So pulse modulation utilizes in various communication systems. Your phone, my phone, laptops, all sorts of devices that we're using these days. It involves the conversion from analog signals into a digital format by representing the signal using series of discrete pulses. So as you can see on the screen, that is the pulses. So this process, why we need it? To allow for efficient transmission, storage and processing of the information. So here are the types of pulse modulation. So we have amplitude modulation, width modulation, position modulation and code modulation. So what are the difference basically? So PWM is less susceptible to noises, while PPM is less susceptible to noises compared to PAM, while PAM, they are easily affected by noises. Alright, so what is sampling theorem? Nicholson and Lansing. So sampling theorem is accurately represented if it's sample at a rate greater or than or equal to twice of the high frequency, which is also known as Nicholson and sampling theorem, also known as Nicholson rate. So as you can see the formula there. So we will want to avoid aliasing because this requires a whole another different job, which will cause inefficiently in our modulation signal. So the conversion of analog signal to digital signal, you need to go through the sampling and then the quantization. What is quantization is the convert from discrete time continuous value signal to discrete time discrete value signal. So as you can see the figure on your screen, the yellow line indicates the analog signal and then you will uh, get the sampling uh, on the green line and then how to get the digital signal you need to go to the quantize uh, quantization a few things three main component quantization level interval and value and then you will get the blue line which is a quantized signal so basically that's how you obtain your digital signal okay so now we move on to what is bit depth bit depth is the number of bits of information in each sample the bit depth determines how much information can be stored a sampling with 24 bit depth can store more nonsense and hence more precise than a sampling with 16 bit depth so when a signal is sampled, it needs to store the sample audio information in bits. This is where the bit depth comes into place. High bit depth is needed to have more accuracy of our recording or our reading. Okay, so for every digital sample, our analog to digital converter will ask, what is amplitude? The question that remains is, how is this amplitude represented? So the answer for it is our bit depth, which determines both how many different amplitude levels or steps are possible and what are the overall capacity of the system is, uh, how, loud, how loud of a signal it can tolerate. As you can see from the sample rate, the higher the sample rate, the higher the bit depth, the higher the accuracy and the lesser the error. So next we go for an example, which is CD quality has a bit depth of 16. So this means we will have two power of 16 different amplitude values available to us. In uh, mathematics, we will, be, we will be like this, 2 multiplied by 2 and we equals to 2 power of 16 and we have 65,568 steps. So since the number of steps is divided into positive and negative value, we will have uh, 32,767 positive and for our negative value, we will have 32,768. As continuity from previous part, a digital system total amplitude capacity can be roughly calculated to be 6 decibel per bit. Thus, our system can tolerate 96 decibel for our 16-bit CD quality signal. It is calculated with 16 bits multiplied by 6 decibel. So, is 16 bits sufficient? Although it varies from person to person, the hearing threshold is commonly stated as 120 or 120 decibel. Therefore, it's possible that our 16-bit system is insufficient. In contrast to the CD quality sampling rate and its allowance for the range of human hearing. I'm Ho Wei and now I will be talking about the multiplexing. Multiplexing is a process with transmitting a multiple signal and combining into a single signal over a shared medium. As you can see that in the picture, there are few inputs and then it will be combining into a one input. And then this process is actually can increase the capacity of a transmission channel. So, there are three types of multiplexing. The first one is frequency division multiplexing, second one is time division multiplexing, and the third one is phase division multiplexing. For the frequency division multiplexing, the available bandwidth of a single transmission medium will be divided into multiple channels. So we can see that uh, in the diagram, there are few carrier frequency channel, and then each frequency channel will be allocated to a device, and by using modulation technique, the input signal will be transmitted into the different frequency band and to combine to form a composite signal. So the bandwidth of this uh, frequency division multiplexing is actually equals to NFM and N is actually the number of subcarrier being used. For the time division multiplexing, 
The time frame will be divided into multiple slots, and one slot will be allocated for each passage signal. Uh, it having the same frequency, carrier frequency, just the time slot will be different. So the several orbit red signal will be multiplexed or combined to form a high bit red signal to be transmitted over a high frequency medium. So uh, there are two types of the time division multiplexing. The first one is the PAF and the second one will be the PCM. So for the last one is a space division multiplexing. And as you can see that actually space division multiplexing can use multiple cable or use the uh, smart antenna. So the channel can be operated even though there is some 40 in one of the cable. So how to increase the capacitor system is can increase the uh, antenna which will create more independent channels. Hi guys, so now let me talk about 5G which is a form of advanced multimedial modulation. And in the previous videos, we have known that digital modulation is actually a combination of amplitude modulation and also angle modulation. Now, let me talk about the basics of 5G. It can be achieved through orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, OFDM, through um, frequency division multiplexing, FDM, and quadrature amplitude modulation, QAM. QAM consists of the 64 state and the 16 state. But what is QAM and FDM? As you can see in the diagram in your left, those subcarriers, those orthogonal subcarriers, the colorful hills, are closely packed subcarriers for a high data rate. Whereas you can see the colorful blocks uh, representing the frequency, those can be achieved from FDM because it assigns a specific portion for a specific frequency spectrum. Therefore, together, the FDM and QAM is able to achieve a high data rate and a spectral efficiency. Now that we have understood how 5G gets their high data rate and their spectral efficiency, what are the benefits that we can obtain from this? Firstly, is obviously a speed upgrade. So 5G is much faster than 4G. Therefore, if you forgot to download a movie before boarding a flight and you have 5G in your phone, don't worry, it got you covered. You're able to download a high resolution movie within six seconds. Next is low latency. The term latency refers to a time it takes for a signal to travel from a source to receiver and this is increased significantly in 5G. Enables us to control a device remotely in the near real time. This is beneficial in agriculture, manufacturing, logistics, virtual reality, and also augmented reality. Lastly, the third benefit is enhanced capacity. 5G op uh, offers a much better capacity compared to 4G, and it, it paves a, a path for IoT development. Its information of technology enables a seamless communication between devices. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nurdaina Safia Mithi Muhammad Nazri, and I will present about misconception in digital modulation. So the first misconception in digital communication is related to the health issues. So there is a concern in increasing exposure to electromagnetic field and radiation towards the people associated with the 5G networks. As we all know, exposure to the radiation can cause cancer and as well as other illness. But numerous scientific studies have found no consistent evidence in supporting that 5G technology affecting people's health. So the next misconception is related with the safety issues where there is a concern about security and privacy of people's data information. This happens due to an increasing connectivity and data transfer capabilities of 5G network, so some people express their worries that they may lead uh, to unauthorized access as well as other privacy-related issues. However, this is not related with the 5G network but rather depend on the implementation of the security measure itself, the responsibility on keeping people's information data safely. So next is about legal issue, where there is a concern in installation of 5G infrastructure is not subject to local zoning laws and regulation. But some people might think this unauthorized installation is according to their own will without legal clearance. But deployment of this 5G infrastructure such as small cell antennas and a tower is subject to the local zoning laws and regulation. So the last misconception is related to the cultural issue where there is a threat to cultural identity and traditional practices due to social inequality. So the social inequality occur due to the communities divide into certain groups which the first group is the one that led to access of technology especially the old folks and the other one um, which advanced in the technology such as our young generation nowadays. So these two groups might form a tension that will affect the cultural identity as well as the traditional practice which the young generation might be too focused with their gadget as well as the technology and the old folk might be left behind. Alright, one, two and three things that you learned today is another new knowledge that you can apply in your everyday life. Purposely on multiplexing and post-modulation. So that's all from our group. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day everyone. Bye-bye.